I got a call from a filmmaker friend of mine. He wanted a pretty complex shot of a sculpted object and then a zoom. And the zoom had to go right into the eye of this sculpted object. So uh, normally this uh, object is, if in the real world, it's a couple of inches high, but to help photograph it, it's made into an 18 inch sculpture, rotate, and then the camera is supposed to zoom into the eye, all the way into the eye. And there, there's two problems that are introduced. Uh, the first one is the uh, resolution of the file. It, it, there's only so much you can zoom in or blow up an image before it starts to fall, or, fall apart. The bigger one, though, is the depth of field. This is really difficult to control uh, when you're doing macro photography. It's um, almost impossible to start from a regular position and then zoom all the way in and still control that, that depth of field. I mean, you've got to be the most amazing focus puller in the world to be able to do that. I'm not, so I created a technique that I just called power zoom. The shot was being done with a Canon 5D Mark II. Fantastic, uh, uh, you know, video camera, but an even more amazing still camera. So I thought, well, why don't you pull in or rotate that object, and then when, it, when you stop, take a photograph, because you're using the exact same camera, um, and the resolution when you open up a 5D image is 60 megabytes in Photoshop. That's an enormous amount of information to be able to zoom in. You can go at 2,000%. So that was the thought. Um, so I decided to create a technique, or, or, or actually test the technique myself. It proved much harder than I expected for a number of reasons. Let's just go and look at the shot and I'll explain some of the problems. So here we have the still image. This is a Photoshop file uh, that I have loaded and the actual movie file. And we've got a slider move here. I'm using a slider from a company called Cinevate. Um, and this slider allowed me to get really, really close up to a point and then I brought in the still image and we zoom into the still image with all this clarity all the way down to the letters on the page. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, I fixed a lot of things here. First of all, making a slider move is almost like a ballet. Uh, there's it, it, they almost always require physical movement to get from one side to the other or you're, you're you know, twirling a dial or something. And basically you need to have a very smooth movement. Guess what I didn't do? I didn't pay enough attention. I didn't do enough takes. The end of my movement went from an accelerated speed to a kind of slow to a stop where I wanted to have an even speed to the end. And um, because of that, I ended up with a file that jerked a little bit near the end. Uh, I sent it to a couple of uh, people who I trust their eye. Uh, Kush here as the director at Adobe TV, and he said that's a nice test, but uh, you might want to try to fix that. And that's what I expected. I thought, okay, it's not there. So here's what I had to do. Um, I had to take that file, and here's the movie file, and you can see that I'm, I'm editing the scale. So the scale of the movie file is right now, it's at 100%. And I'm starting to blow up the video frame itself. And what that did was it helped uh, mask my problems with the slider, where I stopped moving, I deaccelerated a little bit too soon before the edge. And at that point, we introduce the other image, and you can see it pops inside here. And I had to do an enormous amount of color correction. My thought was, hey, I'm shooting on a 5D. Don't the videos have the exact same look as the stills? Wrong. I should have shot with a chart. Again, it was in a hurry to create this demo. If you shoot with a chart, then at least you have an example to work with. Any kind of HD chart would be fine. Bars, something with colors, neutrals, even a white card would have helped me. Uh, just hold up a white piece of paper for crying out loud and I would um, be able to look at those. Because if we look at the still here and I go up to my effects controls, let me show you the difference when I turn off my levels. Yow, yeah, that's the difference. That's how different it was when it shot with the um, the still. And I also quickly added a mask down here. And if I turn that mask on and turn the levels off, um, I just added a quick mask 
to help me edit the colors from the still to the video. Instead of trying to do it from a frame to frame and back up, just create a quick mask and of course you can easily turn that on and off. And now I can see where I'm matching that, that file. Oh, let me turn my levels back on. Very, very uh, yellowy uh, colored paper there. And, you know, admittedly, I could probably uh, fix this a little bit more. But the bottom line is not the fact that, that, you know, this was completely perfect or wrong or right. It's a technique that I wanted to, to throw out there to get this amazing uh, clarity of these high resolution stills. It's just not as easy to blend that motion from, from you know, a complex uh, motion like this into uh, the page itself. So the page itself, if we look at that, is also being scaled. So it comes in at uh, 52%, and then we zoom all the way up to 188%. And, and if I want, I'm just going to grab these sliders and drag all the way in. Remember, this is a high resolution still uh, from the Canon 5D 60 megabyte file, uh, so I've got the option of going all the way in and doing that. Um, I also took my keyframes down in here used keyframe assistant and did an easy ease and uh, in out so you can see that you know I'm trying as hard as I can to make these work I did a tiny bit of opacity change so if I zoom in inside here instead of just jumping to that I added a one keyframe uh, opacity change in here which is you know negligible maybe I could take that down to a second frame in there and bring it in the problem with with doing too much of, of a difference. So if I try to change the opacity um, uh, between that still image and the video for too long, the problem was you could see the words on the page from the video, you could see the words on the page from the still, they're never gonna match perfectly. So you saw a little bit of, a, of an effect where it was you could see both at the same time, basically. Uh, if you like that effect, it works perfect. Just do a long dissolve between the two, but I didn't, I just wanted that to snap in. So that's what it looked like. That's what it was to work with. Learn from uh, this technique and from uh, my mistakes. So just do a quick uh, RAM preview inside here and we'll have a look at this. So that's it, a technique that I call power zoom inside Adobe After Effects using Photoshop stills, video and stills from the Canon 5D Mark II.